In this video, you and I are going to take a look at several of our options regarding what we can filter on when doing web filtering on the FortiGate. So let's imagine we have a user right here that is about to go out to the internet. There's lots of great reasons why we might want to filter what that user can get to out on the internet. For example, we don't want that user to go to a site that has inappropriate content. And inappropriate content varies a little bit based on the business, but there is some content that you'd probably never want a user to go to from a corporate machine. Another reason for filtering, there may be bandwidth considerations, and we may have bandwidth intensive or bandwidth wasting categories of sites like streaming sites or internet telephony sites where we might want to just restrict the user from ever going there and that way we're preventing that traffic from being sent. There may be malicious sites and we may be worried about data loss, which could be actually corporate data or credentials that could be stolen. So if we can train our firewall to do some web filtering and prevent our users from going to those sites, that's a big win. So these are some great reasons regarding why. And next, let's take a closer look at what we can filter on. One of the elements that we can filter on here at the FortiGate is URLs. So we can make a list specifically of URLs, including using wildcards. And then if a user is trying to go to a website that matches those URLs, we can set up specific actions for that, including blocking it from going through. Another amazing feature is the ability to block based on categories. And that's provided as part of FortiGuard from Fortinet. So our firewall knows what category a website falls into. And as a result, we can say no categories of this or no categories of that. Or if they're trying to go to a category X, then go ahead and authenticate them. Or if they are going to a certain type of website or a certain category of website, we can specify that we want to prompt them to confirm that they really want to go to that site. There's also some abilities with web filtering to filter on some content, and we'll cover more content analysis and application analysis as we take a look at some other features of the firewall regarding application inspection. And regarding the categories, if you're ever curious about which category a website falls into, we can go online and just look that up, even if you're not at the firewall interface. So this website is www.fortigard.com. And from here, we can put in a URL and check the database to identify the category that FortiGuard has put that website into. So for example, if we did twitter.com and pressed enter, it says it's social networking. If we did google.com, that's search engines and portals. If we did bing.com, that should also be search engines and portals. If we did skype.com, that would show up as internet telephony. Let's go ahead and do facebook.com. And that shows up as social networking. So the firewall also gives you that ability right at the interface to do a quick lookup. But here's how you get to that same information over their website. Again, this is at www.fortiguard.com. And when setting up a web filtering profile, we can specify the action to take based on the category that the user is trying to go to. So in our web filtering profiles, we can specify based on a certain category to take a certain action. And those options include allowing the traffic or monitor. And monitor allows the traffic, but it also logs it. There's the option of block, which prevents the user from going to the site that was blocked. And it also presents the user a screen from the FortiGate that indicates why it was blocked. Another option is warning, which presents a warning to the user and then gives the user the choice of clicking to continue onto the site. Another option is to authenticate. And that's where if the firewall does not yet know who the user is behind that source IP address, and at that point, it can bring up a captive portal, effectively a web interface, asking that user to authenticate so it can identify who that user is. So if we're using the next generation firewall mode of profile based, what we would do is we'd create a web filter profile and then associate that profile with our firewall policy. And that's what puts it into effect. We also have some options for overrides in the event that we want one specific website that's in a category like social networking to be categorized on the local firewall as something else. We also have the option on the firewall for a certain user or a certain IP address to use a different web profile than what's currently associated with the firewall policy. So here's what we get to do next. In the next video, let's put a game plan together regarding what we want to have happen regarding web filtering. And then with that plan in place, we'll then walk through step by step, setting up the profiles, associating them with firewall policies, verifying they work. And then once they work, we'll then go ahead and take a look at setting up overrides and exceptions as needed on the FortiGate. So I'll see you, my friend, in the very next video as we put a game plan together for web filtering on the firewall. Until then, I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.